Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? <laughs> funny story, funny story. Before we start, we actually already recorded this episode, but the audio was so bad. We actually, I post up on the story. I, I don't know if we'll upload or not. Maybe we just upload for content. We're sake, probably not uploading. Yeah, yeah, you know what? You're right. Making a decision right now. <laughs> Quality first. But we're happy to be here to do episode 25 of the Thoughtful Banter Podcast. 25? That's crazy. It's a fourth of 100, bro. Um, Quick maths. We took some down. Huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, we did take some down. <laughs> didn't we? Yeah. yeah. How many did we take down? I don't know. I think we just it. took out one for sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But what's going on, guys? Uh, welcome to episode 25 of the Thoughtful Banter Podcast. I am your host, Matthew, here, here with my co host, Hussein. Yes, sir. Quickly, we want to shout out the patrons for this episode. We actually got some new ones to say. If you could do me the honor of shouting those people out. Yes, sir. Thank people. you guys so much. I'd like to shout out Ali, Ahmed, Latifa, Ali, different Ali, TGM. Thank you for coming back to the family, Justin and Muhammad. Thank you guys so much. Also, shout out to Justin, Muhammad, and Ali, who have all three of them have been with us for a year now. That's the crazy. Woo. Patrons steadily supporting for a year now. It's a birthday. Birthday party. Absolutely. For the patrons. Woo, woo, woo. I actually first want to start this episode off by shouting out our boy over at Top oh, yes, Oc. sir. Yes, sir. Top Oc Drip. You see, we were in the merch. Yes, sir. We, we were in the here. merch representing. Oc. So it says Oc right here. And then on the side. Oh, oh wrong, wrong side. side. <laughs> you looking mad aesthetic, dog. And then on the side, it says, I don't know what they say. Read it. There is no God but God. And Muhammad is a messenger of God. Absolutely. And facts. then I think on the back. We got something too, right? Yeah, it just has a big A. A big A. Did yeah. it have a seven on the bottom? Mine's, yeah. Yours is a seven, so does mine. Yeah, seven. That's for the seven levels of heaven. <sighs> That's beautiful. So, yeah, it's a good friend of ours. He um started this clothing brand, and this is our official shout-out of him. Please go follow his Instagram. What's his Instagram handle, Red Click Matthew? His Instagram handle is top and then A-H-K-7. So, top oc seven. Uh, it's the number one Muslim clothing brand. It's great, actually. We know this guy our whole lives. Great dude. He's a hard worker. He's the kind of guy that, you know, just gets stuff done. Yeah. That's I like so it. they're launching. They're having their official launch tomorrow. Yeah. That's when it is. Juma. He made it on that day specifically. You yes, know, sir. We all know about the, the blessings of that day. Um, also, if you follow him on Instagram and hit him in his DMs, he has it on his post. If you hit him in his DMs, follow him on Instagram, hit him in his DMs. You might be able to get the first access to a 20% off code for his uh, merch. So go over, run to him, hit him up. It'll be worth it. This is very high quality. It fits a little snug. So if you got some games, you you know, you look a little good in it. Show off the games. Uh (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if your wife would be okay with you wearing the outside note cap. Uh, yeah, I might have to get a bigger size, but for, <laughs> for, the, it for, the, for the sake of the for of repping and shouting our boy, yeah. I have to wear it for the podcast, you know. For sure. Yeah. <coughs> Apparently it's too it's too snug on me, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a little it's a little it's a little bit, you know, it, it's a it reminds me of like that Christian Guzman clothing. It's like some uh Alpha Lee. Alpha Lee, you know, yeah. like it's good like if but you're I've heard Alpha Lee was actually like I, I never bought anything from them, but I heard their their quality was not that good. Really? It's actually like decent quality, you know. Yeah. It's like sturdy. Study, study, into my yeah. Do this. What is it? Stay sturdy or stay sturdy. Anyways, yeah. Stay sturdy. Check out Topak right now. And you know what? If you order from uh from Topak, you know just just slide in the DMs and let them know thoughtful, thoughtful banter, banter sent, sent you. you. Aha. Thoughtful banter sent you. Inshallah, maybe soon we'll have like a, a promo code for you guys. Yeah. We're, we're, maybe we're not big enough for a promo code. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. see what happens. We'll see. Aha. <laughs> yeah, man. Last time we recorded, it was uh we we actually got to meet. The one and only Zunair. Absolutely, uh, it was it was an honor. By the way, that episode hit a thousand views. Yeah, it just recently hit a thousand views. You know, it's so funny. Um, and <laughs> so this is kind of like meta or like uh, deja vu, like almost because we've already recorded this episode, like we said. But anyways, bear with us. We might be a little bit rusty in the beginning. But anyways, um, it was funny because you know, people whenever people ask me about the channel, um, usually I'm like really shy about it. But th- after this episode with Zunair, where we got like a lot of views for us, right? <laughs> so, a lot so of views. We got, so we got like a thousand <laughs> views exactly, which is like a lot of views for us. And then we also increased our sub count by like 
38 or like, like 50 thir- or like 39 almost 40 almost 40 yeah, we got subscribers. like 50 subs since no it wasn't since 50 be- no before the shot no before the episode though like just him shouting oh just us him shouting out. us out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. probably so probably effect. so probably collectively from zudair we probably got like 50 55 subs that's just yourself. on it's, that's just on youtube i think in yeah. total we probably got like 50 follow uh, 100 followers yeah on instagram and youtube probably yeah so um yeah, and so <laughs> Zunair has made me bold. I'd be going around to people like, yeah, yeah, you know, I got a little YouTube channel, <laughs> I got a little son, son, <laughs> and we just hit a thousand views, and then they look at me. No, I'd be like, yeah, we just came out with a video with um this uh, dude. You know, he's popular on TikTok. His name is brother. His brother's name is Zunair. He's really cool. You know, really nice brother. And they're like, oh yeah, you got a lot of views, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, how many? You know, like a thousand. And they look at me like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so Zunair. Zunair's clout, you know, Ch- changing lives. Absolutely. I mean, we got we got more patrons from it. I want to say that was actually like it was really cool meeting him because and like I know you should assume the best of people, but like, bro, I'm not the most religious person. Okay, I don't always be assuming the best of people, uh-huh. and it, it's not just because it's because I've met people before with clout. I have mm. worked with like some YouTubers and stuff like ghostwriting. Yeah, ghost ghost editing videos, ghost writing scripts. Like, um, they're not always like the most uh, genuine people. Mm. Uh, but it was cool to meet Zunair because he actually is how he is in his videos. Yeah. Like even when he's just like chilling with the boys, you know, like that's, that's how he talks. So it was really cool. Mashallah. We had a good time. I really felt like we made like a friend for life, you know, yeah, like definitely. we ever go to Texas and I, I know I can hit up someone there. So it was vibes. Inshallah, we get to do it again. Inshallah. Maybe we go to make a trip out to Texas, bro. Yeah. It would be thoughtful Make a trip vibes. out to Dallas. The food. You haven't, the food out there, bro. Bro. Don't talk to me about food right now. I got like. I got like an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about I'm that so right, now. right now. Everyone on that rumble on break. But speaking of rumble on, I missed on. a whore today <coughs> accidentally, dude. Like the alarm didn't go off, and I woke up. You know, like I, I woke up like you know when you really tired. You, you wake up from a deep slumber. You like disoriented. Like I woke up <laughs> and, and I just realized I missed Fajr on time. Uh huh. I was just bummed out. Yeah. So we um. So last night was Laylatul Qadr, so we went to the masjid and we stayed until like three. And then we left, and there was like that. Hello, I help was like twenty minutes away from where we were. <coughs> oh yeah, you went there. So we went there, and then I just came, when we came back, we got back like right as Fadri came in, so I just prayed and then went to sleep. How was the IHOP? I mean, it was IHOP, bro. <laughs> yeah, it takes more than halal food to it was make IHOP, IHOP good. It was IHOP with some turkey bacon, my guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? What did you have there, though? I had the uh, the bacon temptation, the turkey bacon temptation. Yeah, I was about to say, how do you um, watch out? So it was like an omelet, and it had a whole bunch of turkey bacon and cheese in it, basically. Turkey bacon isn't a very good meat. Um, I know. disagree. No, it's not. It just isn't bad. Sir. I had the um, the it's chicken like, omelet. It's like uh, if you like like cold cuts, like turkey cold cuts, it's like the same thing, but warm. I see. Yeah. So like, I really like the turkey cold cut stuff. Um, it's probably n- no. It's definitely not good for you. But I enjoyed it. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that's why I'd be avoiding it. Um, so, yeah. So I got that, and I got, like, a sack of pancakes and called it night. But the point is, we came back right before Friday, so I, I looked out. What I've had what I've had to start doing is I've actually had to start missing Sohor, so I get enough sleep for, like, the rest of my day. Yeah. You know? Because if you wake up for so if you, like, do, like, the Ramadan spiritual stuff, you end up staying awake at least till 12. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because... Really, you need time to be able to drink enough liquid, eat enough food, and to socialize with people. If so, if salat's in like at eight, basically, right? You don't. You you're not gonna eat and drink in one hour. You're yeah. Hurt so your stomach so, like that. so what I've been doing is I've been like keeping track of my water intake throughout the night, and then when I go to sleep, I'll set my alarm for like right before Fajr, and I'll have like some water next to me. Just down the water. maybe maybe like not not right before maybe like fifteen ten fifteen minutes before Fajr, I'll drink like a couple glasses of water, and then that'll be it. You know, I'm not trying to do too much. Yeah, you know, like, I've been working out during Ramadan, and I usually always hit the sauna. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> I, 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 hit, I hit the sauna, and I was not sweating. And I was like, <laughs> it's time for me to walk out of here. Yeah. It yeah. might be dangerous. <laughs> yes. So it might be dangerous. I went, I'm usually, su- like, sweating. I was, like, dry. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went to the, the gym the first week of Ramadan. I went twice. Mm-hmm. And, and then the second week, I went once. So usually I'll go, I'll, I'll do like a full body workout. So I'll go like two, two times a week. Um, sometimes if I'm feeling like, sometimes if I'm feeling lazy, like I'll do like the compound lifts on one and then like the accessory stuff on another. So it ends up being three, but most of the time it's just two. <coughs> so I did that 
the first week and then every single time i went to the gym without fail I, when i came home i just knocked out <laughs> like i just knocked out basically until um if thought you'd be having long workouts too though you work out for like an hour you do full body i know your routine yeah yeah um i, th- I thought that if i took it like significantly lighter it would help it didn't dude you're, dude, you're not eating in the day bro it did that's hard but um yeah i thought about going in the sauna and then i was like i'll probably i'll probably end up killing myself like <laughs> just like all <laughs> the, the my my body is trying its best to retain all this water and all this moisture and i'll just like zap all of it out of Dude, it. it was so cool too because like the whole thing about like the water re- the science behind water retention is just so interesting mm. and i just felt like my body knows it's dehydrated obviously mm. so my body was like why sweat like yeah. we're just trying not to sweat and usually like when i hit the gym even after like light cardio light lifting weights i sweat I sweat very easily because uh-huh. I outside of Ramadan I drink like a gallon of a gallon of water. That's obnoxious, bro. It's not. How you do you not go to the bathroom all the time? I mean, I, I, I guess your your ba- your body like adjusts. Uh-huh. I, I've adjusted to it, and also it's like. So I'm, I've heard that like when you start doing that initially, for a lot of times you have to go to the bathroom like really frequently, but then you kind of get used no, to I, it. No, I adjust. That's yeah. that's definitely true. Also, I'm a bigger dude than you, mm-hmm. so like you would probably pee a lot more than me. Bro, but why do you have to say the word, bro? Just well, say, it's, use the it's, a word, it's a word wrong? Say, <laughs> no, it's a, <laughs> it's a I, just, I just don't like that word. <laughs> you probably have to go to the bathroom a lot more than me. Oh. Me, I'm like I'm like 230 pounds. Mm. You know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm way bigger than you. All so the specs. Like, <laughs> and, and you're looking good, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not good enough, but I appreciate you. So it's like, yeah, there's like more water to go around. But plus, I think it's because I go to the gym a lot. And mm. I just sweat it out. I purposely sweat it out. Like I like to go to the sw- sauna just to sweat. Yeah. I, I don't really be sweating, bro. When? Even like outside of Ramadan, generally speaking, I don't sweat. Like unless I'm playing basketball or something like basketball for hours. Is that like a? Is that is that like a genetic advantage to sweat? I have no idea. I mean, it's supposed to cool your body down, right? Yeah. Maybe I just don't be getting that hot. Yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. I mean, I probably I think I probably, f- you know, like it's kind of a thing. Like you see, like. This sounds this sounds rude. I'm not trying to be rude though. Yeah, it's like fat people sweat mm-hmm. easily, so I think that's probably ha- having to do with it. You have like a low, you have a way lower body fat than me. Maybe you're probably like what like 15 percent right now max. Probably like 12, 12 to 15. Something like that. Yeah, 12 to 15 percent. So it's like this is like the heaviest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> you're looking good, bro. <laughs> it's so funny when people. Uh, I want to change the subject completely. In life, when people make judgments about you but they don't know that journey it's so interesting because mm. like if you're like a judgmental guy and you don't know you for example and i come up to you and i'm like this guy is scrawny and i'm like me knowing you forever i know <laughs> you were way skinnier growing up yeah like you were super super skinny i used to be like even once i got in like 16 17 i remember 16 17 18 19 i was stuck and i mean stuck at like 135 yeah i could not go past 135 and i remember before that i was at like 110 115 and i had actually gained weight remember like i had started working out and i had actually gained muscle yeah you look good um and then but i was just like stuck at like between 135 and 140 Mm -hmm. for like three years (laughs) like i literally just was not gaining Mm -hmm. muscle and like people don't know the journey Mm. unless like they know you i was literally stuffing myself do you remember yeah like i would literally like Stuff like stuff myself. Trying, I I was I had all the protein. I, you know, I, I had all the like supplements. I was eating, you know, f- well past my uh, maintenance mm-hmm. every day. But for, it just would not stick to me. But you, but you got bigger now. Yeah, I don't what, know what changed. Um. Well, probably I've become. I've. This is probably the most sedentary I've ever been in my life. Mm. Um, as far as like, like my job. I mean, before you, before I, I even when I had work, one when I worked, I was like all, all I was worked at a fast food place, so I was like always on my feet. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I worked at an EMT place, which was even more physical activity. Mm-hmm. Like the, some of the things we had to do for these patients to get them into their homes was wild. Yeah, you're probably burning <laughs> tons of calories. <laughs> you know, just walking um, and traveling. <clears throat> so like my job, my job itself, um, was like physical, and even then I didn't work that much. So whenever I wasn't working, I was like either working out in the gym or I was with my boys playing some kind of sport, either basketball, soccer or something, you know? So right now it's probably the most sedentary I've ever been. I do a lot of sitting for school, for work, um, more than I've ever done. <coughs> and then also the basketball outings and the soccer events and every all that kind of the sporting stuff has mm-hmm. also decreased. Um, so that's probably allowed me <laughs> 
to finally like get some of the weight to stick on. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I'm lifting also no heavier. Growing. Yeah. So like a lot of the energy back then was probably used to just grow. To just grow, yeah. And you probably yeah, weren't yeah. eating as much as you thought you were, just because because everything else would go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now also I'm like lifting heavier than I've ever lifted, mm-hmm. and the appetite's there. So you know, it's fun a lot. Uh-huh. Good work. <laughs> yeah. I get so salty when anyone gives me unsolicited weight loss advice. Uh-huh. It makes me actually angry. <laughs> I'm not a violent person, but it makes me like initially just be like, when, just want to shut Smack someone them. up. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> You know, like I was with a coworker, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I go to the gym." And he was like, "Oh, you go to the gym? Surprise!" And I was like, oh. <laughs> And then he's like, "Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing?" And I was like, "Here comes the advice." I'm like, "This guy has like higher. This guy's skinnier than me, but like, bro, your body fat's way higher. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not strong, bro. Like, yeah. You know when someone's like in worse shape than so you, they're the advice. advice and I'm like, did the advice go? Yeah, advice came. <laughs> I had to, I had to shut it down, brother. <laughs> I just had no, to shut but it here's down. the thing. <clears throat> There's also a look that lifters have, like people who actually lift. There's a look in their posture. There's a look in their like their shoulders. There's a look like you can tell when someone lifts, male or female. It, right? But only if you lift. That's the thing. But that's and that's but what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So so it seemed <laughs> like he's not really about it. He's <laughs> definitely not about it. Because I like it's so funny too. I have like this. I had this guy at my job, big guy, big guy, and like. Dude, like when I say big guy, like twenty two inch arms, uh, you know what I'm saying? Twenty two inch arms, yeah, man, he's in great shape. Uh-huh. And uh, and I don't, I don't get it often because I'm not around a lot of lifters. But he saw mm-hmm. me, he said, "Hey, man, oh yeah, you've been lifting, you've been working out, man." Like I could tell, and I was like, "Oh my god," you know, that <laughs> big guy gassing you up. Like when people are in the gym actually, and they know what to look for. Like they know what you're, what yeah. you're doing. You yeah. know what you look for? I think it's like the shoulder trap area. Like yeah, you that's see, like, definitely this like area's risen. It doesn't matter what your body fat percentage is, if you you know. You, th- this area is going to go up. Also, the arms, the back, if it's like really defined. Yeah. Around like the shoulder blade. Like, yeah. the, like you see like those two lumps <laughs> rise up. Um, upper chest, too, yeah. like in clothing. Even the dudes like fatter, skinny, you see like the rise in the shirt on yeah. the upper chest. Yeah, yeah. Right it doesn't there. sit the same. It do- I don't. I don't. Yeah. I ver- verily, a man who lifts is not the same as a man who doesn't lift. <laughs> <laughs> Verily, <laughs> verily, just my opinion. Of okay, course. I hope that wasn't like a Ayat Quran, brother. Man. That wasn't. That definitely <laughs> wasn't. <laughs> I you, know. I know. Do I you know. think? Um, I feel like this sounds like really judgmental. Mm-hmm. All right, but I feel like men need to have some kind of physical activity mm-hmm. that they're good at that keeps them in shape. And I don't think they need to be good at it. No, no, not need. To, sorry, need to be like passionate about uh, to an extent like mm. you need to do that thing and you need to be like proud of doing that thing like i don't think like w- w- by good at it by good at it right who you're comparing yourself to yeah it'd be um i think good at it just means you have to be someone who's improving at it mm. good at it compared improving to yourself. at it yeah yeah relative to yourself and then like you mentioned you like doing it like it's not like a hassle to do yeah something yeah. like you know you get yourself to the gym or you get yourself to boxing or muay thai or soccer but but just something to keep you in shape yeah get you get you active and it doesn't even have to be like a crazy passion because i wouldn't say i'm crazy passionate about the gym yeah i wouldn't say i'm crazy passionate, but i do try to get myself in there every week twice a week at least you just you have know? to do something that you can hold yourself to a standard too yeah you know because it's like it's really easy to get out of shape but like dude i'm learning more and more about fitness Especially like if anyone here has like elder, elderly uh, people in their life or parents, especially you see, man, like at the end of the day, people either confront health and fitness, mm. they either address it when they're young and incorporate it in their life or they run away from it and they and get and stuck back, in a corner and it comes at them. That 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 bill will come due. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it sucks when you get to an elderly stage in your life. And you've already built so many habits yeah, that are not prepared for it. Not, you know, you, that, that aren't conducive to longevity in your life. Mm-hmm. And then your doctor is like, your liver sucks, you're fat, you're depressed. And you have all these issues that could have just been solved if you uh, exercise and ate better. Like moderately while you were Moderately while you were too. Yeah. You know, and now you have to do extreme stuff. Like I've seen like, uh, I, I guess I've just been around a lot of elderly people in my life, mm-hmm. you know, um, I've just heard crazy stuff. Like, I, like I've I've heard people talk about like, um, like losing weight's hard. Like, I, I heard one guy talk about just eating lentils. Eating lentils. And he's like, yeah, I lost all this weight. And he's giving advice to someone else who's elderly. I'm like, when that guy goes, I just, I'm just like, Dude, don't listen to him. <laughs> he's gonna gain the weight back. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's just crazy to see like Islam has such 
Islam already has so much information about health and fitness too. Mm-hmm. And people take it for granted, right? Like, for example, I've heard a hadith that says, you know, when you eat food, make sure your stomach is like basically a third filled with water, a third filled with food, and air. leave a third for air. You know? <coughs> Don't eat too much. So you know you're full, for yeah, example. Yeah, basically. <laughs> or for example, some people are like, oh yeah, the prophet ate dates. If you're like, if you're like really into just the macros and stuff, people be like dates are high. This this used to be me when I first started lifting. <laughs> dates are super high in sugar. Dates are uh, are high in carbs, high yeah. calories. Don't eat Don't dates. Eat them. But now you realize dates are also super high in fiber. Mm-hmm. And in nature, so how many net carbs are you actually like? Consuming? Exactly. Uh-huh. And in nature, this is like this is a subhanallah moment. So our our sugar like in processed food is completely different. Mm-hmm. If you if you eat sugar from like a donut, all right, or a cake. How much fiber is in that? Practically none. Zero. <laughs> you could have like a yeah, you could have like a like a tall lemonade, like a twenty ounce lemonade with like sixty grams of sugar, for example, and mm. not have a single bit of fiber. If you're eating a ton of fruit, if you have sixty grams of, of sugar in nature, you're having a ton of fiber. Yeah. You you can't run away from the fiber. And the fiber f- helps flush that sugar out. Mm. Sorry for my fitness tangent. I was just thinking like <laughs> look at us, look at like a mind bump up here. <laughs> Except for like a thousand times less jack. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, shout out to Mind Pump. I like those guys. Whatever the fitness advice. Whatever they, yeah, I like their fitness advice. Whenever they talk about economics, I just want to like shoot your shoot your head I off. I just want to like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, the very Republican and very uh like very very, sensitive very uh, with their opinions. Free market free market oriented uh, whatever that means cuz you know that means so many different things for so many different people but I won't get into that anyways um <laughs> I love their fi- I love their fitness advice yeah I actually was able to get really on good. their podcast uh-huh. oh yeah that was like a guess like <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't a thoughtful banter feature don't yeah, worry. yeah yeah I would have I would say was would have been there too no like on their podcast they uh, they allow people to uh to come up and ask questions mm-hmm. and now uh, I I I was using one of their programs. Yeah. So I actually asked a question. They're, they're really nice guys. I'm still using their program, actually. It's what I'm using right now. I need to buy a new one. Um, I think I've just used their anabolics, MAPS anabolic, too many times. Yeah. I mean, like, for me, I think there are some exercises in there that are, like, either – I don't know about the benefit of them, but they just feel, they just feel goofy to me, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. So what I do instead is I just supplement it with, like, something that I, I know I like to do. Like, I'll add, like, weighted dips in there. Like, they don't have that until, like – the third phase of the program. Mm-hmm. <coughs> they don't have weighted dips. Yo, oh. don't don't be giving out too much what the program is, bro. We get a copyright strike. Type B, type B, type B, type B, type B. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're right. You're right. But yeah, I just incorporate kind of, kind of things that I like as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, for fitness advice, definitely, I, I, I really appreciate everything they've done. You know, it makes me, the reason, I, what makes me, where my mind goes when I bring up fitness, right? And I know we're like all over the place this podcast. I mean, we've mostly been on fitness. <laughs> yeah. But like fitness is like I need to get like deep. I get deep Everything get deep is fitness, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, what does that mean? By everything, I mean like who you are as a husband, you as a husband, as a son, as an active member in your community, mm-hmm. as a businessman, is your fitness. Your fitness will directly limit or excel you in, in those areas. Explain. If you have cancer right mm-hmm. now and you suck for the law, like if you get cancer and like you have to go through chemo, your 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 activity in all those areas are going, going to be down. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be making as much money. You're not going to be active in your community. You know, like fitness is who you are. As fit as you are is as much you're able to do in life. Mm-hmm. And it's not about going to the gym excessively and having long behind workouts. It's about being someone who has a lot of energy, who has clarity. It's good you it, made that distinction because that was, was like my, that was going to be my next question. Like, yeah, I mean, have to be in the gym all the time. No, like, no, <laughs> that's like if you want to be like an athlete, like if you want to get paid to be an athlete. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, I think like having a lot of energy. Like, if you look at people who aren't fit, right? Mm-hmm. I, I look at myself like when I was 280 pounds, right? Woo, big boy numbers. I was about to 280. Say, good God. 280, <laughs> bro, and I was like really young. <laughs> when I look at myself at like 280 pounds, was I? happy at the time i that was all i knew mm-hmm. i thought to myself yeah i'm happy but now i realize i was most definitely depressed when i say depressed like i think there's like a lot of different kinds of depression and i'm no medical expert by any means okay mm. but i feel like this is not professional advice it's not professional <laughs> advice but like disclaimer depression is doesn't just look like someone who's just like suicidal yeah I, to me like t- no for a lot me, of time personally it's just complacency complacency like ap- apathy 
Yeah. Like, really lethargy in doing everything. Like, no yeah. motivation to do anything. And yeah. th- that's where I found myself. Like, mm. and, and, like, that's that's what really made me realize how good fitness is. Because at the time, like, I remember the, the mindset. It was, like, we we're all, like, with the boys having a sleepover, right? And everyone got around, and they are like, let's see how many push-ups we can do. You know, and everyone went. Some people did, like, threes. Some, some people did, like, ten or fifteen. And I came around. I thought I could do a push-up, I, and I couldn't do one. Mm-hmm. And it was so embarrassing. That, that was my wake-up call. Like, I just wish people who struggle with health and fitness realize that it's not about looking sexy. It's not about showing off to other people. It's about you being able to do more of the things you love and living yeah, a better life. That. Also, don't you think – Hmm. Think about this. So, we know Islamically. Oh, how about to get deep? <laughs> get deep, bro. I'm not. I'm not sure if this makes sense, but you know, I'm get, deep, to get, get deep. deep. Islamically, we know that. So we know that Islamically, like the most rewarding of the jihads or struggles that we go through is jihad and nafs. And you recently shared that um, the hadith in the uh, the chat or that video of Sayyid Mekki sharing the hadith in the chat in the chat um, that I had already told you. But anyways, uh, <laughs> where the prophet sends like a, 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 a convoy and they go to war. And then when they return back to the city, um, the prophet's like welcomes them. He said, welcome to a people who have completed the small jihad. And you know, like these people are coming back from battle <laughs> and battle is hard back in, the, I'd be like, hurt. back in that, those days, you know, it's not <laughs> like I just get in an airplane and I'm there. It's like, I take out months of my life and, I might not return with my sons. You know, that's what it means to go to battle. And the prophet welcomes him. He's like, welcome to the people who have completed the small jihad. And they're like, Ya Rasulullah, like, <laughs> if this is small, what's big? Mm-hmm. And he tells, he says that's jihad and nafs. It's like the biggest um, struggle that we have to go through in this life. Do you think that maybe fitness is like the the doorway into, like, the, like it's like, the gateway drug into jihad and nafs for a lot of people. Subhanallah, that was that was deep. I I, I was not expecting that question. <laughs> I think I think so because it's like everything is connected, right? Like the the spiritual, the mental, and the physical mm-hmm. have some connections. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you know you can maybe take th- some things too far. Like obviously the IFBB pro person, the guy who's just like obsessed over body body fat percentage. Yeah, yeah. At that point, maybe it's not jihad and nafs. Mm-hmm. You know, okay, you're just chasing vanity yeah maybe your jihad and nafs is to stop lifting at yeah. that point, right? <laughs> but it's like um i think for a lot of people yes because fitness is a metaphor like it's a it's a physical action as a uh, you know the quote as above so below you know what i'm saying <laughs> so it's like you're not being able to I get only up, know that from you but anyways you not being able to lift up your blanket to get up for fudger and you're also not able to do a push-up bro mm-hmm. you know you're weak like mm-hmm. you're physically weak and you're also Mentally weak, how can you be spiritually yeah, and maybe strong? Maybe pursuing those like physical activities like makes that connection between the <coughs> spiritual, emotional slash physical more relevant and more clear because yeah. it does take motivation to get go to the gym. Like you're not gonna wanna go to the gym every day. But if you've made it a habit and you understand the benefits that it has for you, you go anyways. And then you can start taking that mindset and applying it to other things. Like Salat, for example. Exactly. You know why? Because it's like every challenge in life is like any challenge. And what I mean by that, it's like um, a spiritual challenge is the same thing as a physical challenge. It's Mm -hmm. hard. Your mind has to overcome it, you know? And it's like sometimes in life, you shouldn't just wait for challenges to come. Oftentimes, the way you become strong is by overcoming challenges you set for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you just wait for challenges to come, those are challenges with way more risks. Yeah. If you wait for someone to punch you in the face... Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to wait for that because you're probably going to fail that challenge. Mm-hmm. But if you take up the challenge upon yourself to go to a martial arts class or go to the gym and you pass that challenge, for one, there's no risk. Maybe if you lose it and two, you maybe you'll be prepared for the challenge that you didn't put for yourself, but life gave to you. Mm-hmm. SubhanAllah. I'm just like <laughs> that went hard. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I think like every every man and, and woman. But I think like my, my focus is men. I think I think every man should be lifting weights or doing some kind of hard physical challenge. Mm-hmm. And there's also one cold quote, I think from, um, I don't know if it's from Marcus Aurelius, but is 
it is a shame for a man to grow old never seeing the beauties their body the, their body is uh capable of oh that's that drone that was on like every single uh, yeah. instagram video yeah <laughs> it is and a shame like for a, a man to grow old and then it'd be like a compilation of a dude like posing in the mirror looking yeah. jack yeah <laughs> <laughs> those are kind of cringe but anyways i love it Matt, it's Matt, you have no idea how many of those matthews <laughs> like every day i'm like bro Every single time, almost every single time, I reply cringe. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Honestly, I wish there was like a uh, an all guys gym you can go to. Just I I just want to wear what I want at the gym. Mm-hmm. And I I have had to dress more halali as of recent. I've been told my gym outfits have been too harami, but I wish like they were. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wish I could just go to the gym and like. Not yeah, worry not about not worry matters, about yeah, and, ju- and just wear like a stringer typey. You dope. know what I'm saying? <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> that would no, be definitely dope. dope. You just pose with your boys. Like you I'm sure the women women want that way more. But yeah, uh, dude, I have to talk about this. Actually, I was at the gym uh, yesterday, and you know you're facing a mirror, and the mirror is useful. The mirror is not meant for you to look at other people. Mm-hmm. The mirror is meant for you to check your form. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like I'm at the gym, and I was doing like uh, shoulder flies. You know, what's is, this is shoulder fly, right? What's this called? Lateral raises? Yeah. Shoulder flies. Lateral raises. And there's this guy, and I've never seen another man make me feel uncomfortable by how he was staring at other women. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that happen to me, but yeah, it, it's interesting. Like he, he finished his set, and there's a lady on the far left, and he's like... Just, <laughs> just staring holes in there. <laughs> he goes, he goes, oh no! And then he just turns back. That's and predatory I was like, for real. I was just that's predatory for real. I'm like, that's so, so disgusting. And you know, <clears throat> to make it uh, to to go deep, right? <laughs> I think every man like struggles with lowering their gaze to some extent. Mm-hmm. You know, at, at the very least, when you first enter the new world of puberty and then you realize the struggle of like the, just the new struggle it is like you see woman completely differently and then you realize oh this is hard to not look let me yeah. Yeah, let me start to practice this in my life um one thing that helped me a lot with that was when i was younger i saw one time just like that i saw another guy look and you just see how ugly it looks for you to be doing it yeah maybe when you're the one looking it's fun yeah. But you have no idea how much of an animal you look like. And yeah, how how absolutely wild you look. You look you like look. an animal. You absolutely. Like you look like a dog. <laughs> you look like an animal. And you look you look like an animal and also depending on how you do it, you look predatory. And so like when I when I had encounters with or when I saw scenarios where people did things like you were talking about, maybe sometimes even worse. Maybe sometimes there was like an uh, like an actual exclamation, right? Not only was it like, okay, that person looks like an animal and looks predatory but seeing the how the the female who was the recipient of that um interaction like action looked afterwards was like the worst part for me mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like she, she looked so uncomfortable mm. like and you should a person should feel bad making anyone man or woman look that uncomfortable by reacting to them in that way you know yeah. Obviously, if it's justified, like you're defending yourself or something, that's something that's something completely different. But like, I mean, like you're just going about your day, and you're made to feel so uncomfortable, like so objectified, objectified. Yeah. And uh, it's just like, get a grip, bro. Mm-hmm. You're at the gym working out. <laughs> Why are you staring? This uh, it's like not the place to pick up woman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it it's kind of weird too because it's like um. Uh, I've been to Middle Eastern countries and it's like, it's a different kind of thing. And like, there's a different kind of sexual repression that's going on there because a lot of guys don't even have places to where they can meet women mm. and like, for lack of a better word, pick up, you know what I'm saying? And, um, that's a different conversation. Like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not here to judge and say how a society necessarily should be. Be mm. you notice like, okay, like in Iran or Iraq, for example, Iraq maybe less so, but still there's not like, it's, it's very stigmatized male and female re- uh, interactions. So like in public transportation and stuff, you see guys stare at women, for example, like just stare, <laughs> stare bullets. I saw this, vi- I saw this Instagram clip. This lady was with her like fiance or boyfriend, whoever in India. And she was just recording her phone like this in front of her showing. And it was like 50 men everywhere mm-hmm. she went. Just 
looking at her. It's like, have you seen those wild. those videos of like women women? You got me speaking like you. Women, they'll put like a phone in their back pocket and yeah. they'll have like it on, and then <laughs> they walk by, and then it's just all these dudes like, like you just see like in the video. <laughs> Obviously, I mean like so even gross. even that itself uh, is like. It's questions about like. Anyways, but um, yeah, you don't want to <laughs> go there. Let's I not, don't. <laughs> let's not go there. But it's just wild. It's super wild. Yeah, you know. So this is a very funny thing. Lowering your case is hard, especially depending on where you're at. There's more temptation. But when you're at the gym, bro, you just gotta think to yourself like, <laughs> like you gotta, you gotta imagine these are all like you have to. This is maybe a little narcissistic for me, but this this motivates me, right? <laughs> I think to myself, I'm built different. Mm-hmm. Not only am I here strengthening my body, my body, but I'm out here really doing jihad and uh-huh. uh, <laughs> And they, you know, and there's all this temptation. <laughs> I'm not gonna break. Uh-huh. Who, who did? Who do you think you just sees that? And then I come Conor McGregor. <laughs> but it's like I just think to myself, I'm I'm built so different right now. Everyone else here is just working out. I'm working out my body. And my spirit, like you know, what I'm saying, <laughs> like I'm different. Like <laughs> this, is, you just gotta tell yourself, yeah. You know, yeah. just just look down at the ground, just avoid mirrors, you know. And it's just like it's also, you know, it's very interesting too. I feel like women kind of treat you differently when you lower your gaze, mm-hmm. like depending on the person. Well, they'd have to know that you're doing it, which is well. I think they do know depending on the environment, because if like if you're somewhere and every single guy is smiling at you trying to make conversation and then you're the guy who's not you're not being mean but you're like if someone asks you a question you're gonna be friendly yeah. like hey do you know what this is I'm sorry I don't know yeah you know but like you're just not you out don't there you to extend conversation you're like, ah. or like, or like super down. smiley yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like ma'am I don't know sorry yeah it, you, I feel like you get a different kind of respect so like it's weird being a Muslim in like up <laughs> okay it's weird being someone who tries their best to practice in spaces that don't really care about that um and like especially in a place like a place here where interaction between the genders is so like normal um like physical interact like physical touch physical interaction well they're speaking and they're also like the physical aspect as well um it's so normal um so it it kind of puts you in like this weird mind state and 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 it puts you in a weird position sometimes too Mm -hmm. because sometimes in like to your point, in not going, in not making your interest known, like about a, a woman or yeah, about a specific woman, for example, it kind of makes that person's interest more. <laughs> so like I've experienced yeah. things like in, in I'll be in class and I have like a lab partner. And I'll have this lab partner th- for throughout like the whole semester, and so we're working on these projects and doing these like lab assignments. And then, for example, she, like, offers to come in for a hug. Like, I'm leaving, and she offers, like, come in for a hug. And I'm like, no hug. Like, no hug. Yeah. And then, like, the next time I see her, it's like, that, that she tries to do that even more. And it's yeah. like, okay, Whoa. like, <laughs> exactly. No like, boundaries. respect my boundaries. You know, it's funny. <laughs> Moment, like, I mean, there's, I, I understand why, but I, it's just interesting. Like, there are so many things that women are not, I think, I think it's because women aren't trained, aren't used to being not wanted. Mm-hmm. because guys are just so down bad mm-hmm. you know so like they don't understand that it's creepy and know me no you know what i'm saying because <laughs> they're just like why you're a guy you should just want me because i'm like i'm here and it's just like no this is creepy i said no hug and you keep going for a hug if i were a guy being like where's my hug like the where's my hug guy <laughs> that guy like dude that, that's the worst person ever be, if my yeah. son is ever the where's my hug guy ah you might I'm, disown I'm, him. i might disown him like yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's the worst thing ever. I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily like I'm not used to not being wanted, or it's like, um, I don't know. It's just like the game, like the 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 game that is the human experience. Mm. You under you you, you feel me? I think like, so. Like I think, I think a man would just as just as easily welcome that kind of a game. You know, mm-hmm. like if if a woman's like, if he perceives that a woman's interested in him, but is still playing like hard to get, like that that same kind of reaction is there from a man. Like, okay, like I'm a, 
I'm gonna make I my see, move. But, it, but uh-huh. it's like saying no contact, for example, uh-huh. to me, that's like a red flag kind of. No, thing. no, and and it's slightly different because like there's no the physical, physical dynamic. I see. Yeah, it's like yeah. I'm gonna hug you, but I also never feel like over overpower you. A like, yeah. guy hugging a woman is, is is a lot different. Yeah, you know, so, like if you're, yeah, it's it's different. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying that makes it okay, but it's definitely not as bad. I don't think. <laughs> I, see, I see. It's not. It's not like morally irrehensible. It's not like it's. Not, it's. There's no intimidation. Yeah. You know, but it, it is. It is a different, d- different kind of <clears throat> power dynamic because it's like if you're a Muslim practicing young man, you know, that hug is a power dynamic. Like, <laughs> you know, if you're like, uh, if you're, if you're like a practicing young Muslim guy and you, and you're not married, mm. a hug to you is like, oh my god, like. I, you know, I want to get hugged, yeah. but I'm not going to let myself get hugged. You know mm. what I'm saying? So it is kind of a, kind of a power dynamic if a girl's just like, I guess, I guess oh, you don't want to hug? Like, Come yeah. on, hug me. We're friends. Oh, it's just a hug. And the guy's just like, oh, it's not just a hug, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, yo, he said no. I've never no thought means of no. this. I've never thought of this. <laughs> I'm going to be real. <laughs> I'm just saying no means no. How did we get here? I, we're talking about lifting. <laughs> Oh, lowering our gaze. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes me uh, it makes me feel again like, talking about this makes me feel feel for the uh Muslims in college campus. Yeah. You know? Like I we, was, were, um, we, we <laughs> talked about that like in the first couple episodes actually. Yeah. I was listening to this uh I don't remember it was a long time ago. Um I heard this clip of Satan Matthew Modarisi. And he was like talking about the importance of marriage and specifically marriage and like these college the college ages like 18 to like 24 i would say um and he was like (laughs) you know these these kids like both the the men and the women living in the west right they're going through the college and they're struggling um and a lot of some of them are even in there for like advanced degrees so it takes even longer than just the four years of undergrad right and their parents won't let them get married until they after they graduate um and so he's like you know these kids are struggling and you know the only people who don't have like significant others are them are their religious kids and the losers. <laughs> he was like, those are the only people, <laughs> you know? And he was like, parents, like he was like, beg- he was like pleading. He was like pleading to the parents, like let them like make it easy for them. <clears throat> you know, I was, um, it's, it was, it was pretty funny. He was, like, it's sad. He's like the religious kids and the losers. <laughs> and I was like, That's it's so sad, bro. Yeah. It's so sad. It really do be like that though. It really do be like that. <laughs> it's, it's sad. And it's also like, it's, it's not normal. It's not healthy. It's not what Islam intended. It's what these backward parents who haven't been really <laughs> oh, relax, bro. No, bro. Like <laughs> if parents, parents, it's their fault. It's your fault. If your kid doesn't know how to like, if you're supposed to raise your child and give them the tools necessary and be there for them and assess like you're growing up in life as well if you have at all some kind of thinking and foresight you should see around yourself Mm -hmm. maybe what your kid might need yeah you know what i'm saying i think also like the issue is like part of the issue at least is parents think of their kids as growing up in the same time and having the same kind of needs as they did it's worse times always um times get worse bro (laughs) right Type B. Type, <laughs> to be Thanos, I like the times get worse. But like, but they do. and so this is even something that we're gonna have to, you know, keep reminding ourselves of when we have kids. Yeah, like, the time they're growing up in is not the time we grew up in. Brazil. We grew up. We we were a little. We were like right before the. We were like at the very beginning of like the internet. So like we got it in its the kids trans- in the metaphors. We got it in its art. It's transforming stage like into what it is now. Dude, kids, right? our kids are but gonna our have, kids like are gonna be in the metaverse. Our yes. kids <laughs> gonna be in metaverse. They're gonna have like but when we have kids from the hospital, doctors gonna ask, "Do you want to have like the? Do you want to have like the the Nerva chip or the Expressa chip? I'm like what's these chips? Like these chips are gonna play like, <laughs> porn in, in their brains when they're like eight years old. The kid can just be like think about porn. Yeah, and the kids gonna have porn. How are you gonna block that? Yeah, you know, bro, I I'm mean, gonna like, have my kids on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I've already I'm not on a farm, but like I've thought about like I'm gonna. And she'll try to do something where, like, my kids can be in a position where they can maybe get married, mm. you know? But, like, I just wanted to say, like, I'm only talking about this. Okay, there's obviously some ego involved, but I'm not talking about to gas myself up. I am just want to say, like, I feel like something good to me was given. And my responsibility is to tell other people that they can have it mm-hmm. because um, I'm not a special person. Yeah. And... It's like it could happen to anyone. It could happen to anyone type mm. B, right? Like this blessing can happen to anybody. They can have it too, right? Inshallah. And I think no one thought I'd get married. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the predictions for like our friend group 
was like me the first thing the first thing no get one thought i was gonna get married not first, no one though. no no one thought you were gonna get married first no, you, you're saying we didn't think you were gonna get married by idea not first yeah, probably not first. Yeah, bro, I was predicted to be first. Yeah, yeah you were. Pre- I mean, ha. It's not, it's not thing you I was first. second. <laughs> 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 but like my uh, like elders, mm. my mentors. No, there are a lot of people. There are a lot of people look down on Mac. Yes, that's. This I had true. grown. I had grown men who were like people who should have been helping you. People who should have been helping me, and maybe they thought they were telling me, "I I'm not going to get married." That is not realistic. Telling me that I should get a girlfriend. <laughs> telling me that I shouldn't pursue marriage. Uh-huh. Telling me who's going to marry me. Mm-hmm. I had people tell me that if they had a daughter, they wouldn't give their daughter to me. Mm-hmm. I had haters, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I had haters. This Matthew could have been a villain, for real. Yeah, he bro. Could've, he could have been... could've easily, that could have easily been his villain arc. I could have been Toby, bro. <laughs> you don't want to see it, bro. But listen. But listen. Genuinely, I just, I, I, you know, I could have been a villain, but genuinely, bro, I just asked a lot for something and I try to move towards that. And that's all you need. I mean, that that's like representative of, of our lives. All we need is God. There was this, um, completely, there was this, uh, hadith that I heard yesterday. Um, uh, I don't even remember who it was from. It was like in Arabic, so I was like, I got most of it, but I didn't get all of it. So I wasn't listening to like who the like narrator it or anything was. But anyways, um, the scholar was saying that a man who was like a slave of God, um, a slave of God in the sense that he was like a creation of God, not that he was actually slaving in the in the for the, in the path of Allah. He dies. <clears throat> and when the angels bring him in front of Allah, like te- in heaven, or not in heaven, in, like Badr's or whatever, um, Allah asks his servant, he's like, what did you do? What did you know of me? And what did you do for me, like in your life? And the guy goes, um, like, I wasn't really doing too much, but I heard of this, this concept that you're like associated with this concept of mercy. Like, I heard you were associated with this concept. And then the ha- the hadith that the scholar said was like, and then God sped this man's sped this man to heaven just for having known of the concept of mercy existing in association with God. Like, that, he's like, this is the mercy of Allah. Um, and that just goes to your point. If you make yourself, if you do what you're supposed to and you sincerely open, open your heart, um, you know, Good things are gonna come, or even if they're not necessarily good things, whatever you need is gonna come, or you just die, and then you got nothing I mean, to worry if about. You die, <laughs> if you die, that's what you need. Yeah, that's what you need. It like I don't, I don't understand. Like, and the, the, the maybe reason, maybe you died so that you didn't commit it worse than later. Yeah, you know the, you the know, story of Prophet Khidr. Isn't the story there a, Prophet, Prophet yeah. Khidr? Um, you know he kills the little boy. He's like, he wasn't gonna be a that's tyrant. Why I put on social media, but yeah, <laughs> he was gonna be a tyrant. You know. Yeah. Let's let's stop that now. Now he can go to now he can go to heaven, a ma'asum kid because he wasn't above the age. It's better for was, him, exactly. And I mean, we've also heard like there, there's even duas. I, I'm pretty sure that I've heard I've heard of a dua that goes like, "Yo, Allah, take me when you're happiest with me. Mm-hmm. If that's now, take me now. Mm-hmm. Like that's a that's a trust in God like yeah. dua. If it's later, it's take me not when I've lived uh, and I want to do all the things I want when I've accomplished my goals. It's your goals to get to heaven. Number one. If I'm ever at a point where the dunya has made me forget about you, just take me, because it's not it's not worth living. And um, I was just check to see my camera still on. Threw me off track. Wow. But the um, <laughs> seriously, like people can make you know make. I made a, a recent video about this. Like just make dua for things and work mm-hmm. for things and believe like Allah is all powerful and just put your put your uh, trust and faith in God mm-hmm. and figure out how to move forward and don't be resentful in life. And don't think like don't be arrogant to act like you know what's in the works for you yeah. and what's possible for you. Don't be like that. You know, I was um, I was thinking about like when people get mad at like God for not answering their duas or like their perceived hit, their perceived lack of an answer from them, um, and they'll be like, you know, I asked God for this much money and I I didn't get it, but say they got. A, a new job that same year they got a new job 
and their salary increased by 10k but in their mind it's like that wasn't god because i did i did everything that i was supposed to to get that and it's like you don't even know how how much mercy you're operating from right now that you're even able to speak and complain about god yeah you got throat cancer <laughs> you know god you, go, Shh. <laughs> you, you know yeah, you did yeah. all these things and like we we take for granted even so much of like the little things the fact that i can i can communicate to you right now and you're understanding the words that i'm saying mm. the fact that i can like blink and i'm just lubricating my eyelids you know (laughs) know? everything everything is a mercy and the only thing keeping that keeping that going is literally a mercy Mm. it's not even like a curse if it's taken it's like that a curse will be like like that's like an action but the lack of you having the thing is the lack of mercy Mm -hmm. like it's it's not even like it's not even something (laughs) like something bad has yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. To yeah. yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, like, it's yeah. not about like, like, something bad happened. It's a matter of for things to function as you enjoy, it's mercy. Mm-hmm. You know, and you don't know what goes into the mercy. You have like no idea. Like just for things like things you don't even think about. Again, think about your health, right? Like the body is such a complex machine. Really, the body is so complicated, and you see people like you could get some bad food poisoning, ruin your ruin your week. You know. The fact that that's not happening, the fact that you're able, even able to have like a bowel movement mm-hmm. in your life, that's a mercy. Yeah. Or even getting sick. Yeah. You get sick, you suffer in this life so that you don't suffer in the next life. Yeah. What would you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> Which one you prefer? Yeah. <laughs> you know, take your pick. It'd be like that. You know. Anyways. Whew. That was just my little rant. No, I feel that. I think that was actually a good time to end. You got one percent battery on this camera. All right, bet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. The episode, I mean, I wasn't, it wasn't too all over the place. I actually really enjoyed that. I think it was actually better than the one that we recorded previously. Yeah, I, li- I like where we uh, ended up going. Yeah. Different route. Uh, before we end it, I just want to quickly remember to shout out again, Top Ox 7 Clothing. If you want to check out, if you want to support a business that's ran by a good Muslim brother who we know, check him out. The, will be the first description in the bio also i know you maybe have seen me comb my beard this episode with this beard comb that is from mystic man it will be the second link in the description box below check out mystic man and check check out check out mystic man for your beard jumps and top box to be a little drippy outside yes, and thank you once again to our wonderful patrons ali ahmed latifa ali tjl justin and um, muhammad thank you guys so much Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Peace.